When I can't see what's in front of me You hold my hand and guide my feet Your word is a lamp that lights my way You're the 
Good morning, morning everyone, good morning. We're going to start the service in 38 seconds, so do come grab a seat. The front row, look how empty this front row is. Uh, come and grab a seat on the front row. We, uh, we're about to start, so come and, come and take your seats.
just in your dreams It's right here, my life is here And I'll be your leader All right, good morning, morning everyone Good morning, happy Easter Isn't it, doesn't it feel a bit early? It feels a bit early, it feels a bit early this morning But uh, happy, happy Easter it's great. It's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, we're excited to worship together. <coughs> I'm so excited, I'm choking. Uh, and across all of our sites, we're, we're gathered here this morning. My name's Steve Bateman. Viv and I, we get to lead, lead this wonderful, wonderful church. And a special warm welcome if this is your first time here or first time in church, we just wanna just say you're, you're so, so welcome. What I want to do before we kick off is invite all the children forward. So I reckon if you're under 12, 11, if you're under 11, why don't you come forward? Come forward here. We've got a special game that we're going to do with all of our children. Come forward. Come forward, children. Come forward. Yeah, babies are welcome. Yeah, come forward. Come forward, children. Hi, morning, morning, morning. We're going to sing a song in a minute. <coughs> Welcome to the chaos. So all the children, why don't you come forward? All right. Why don't you just give everyone a wave? Say hi, everyone. Wave back, say happy Easter. How many, how many, uh, did you get any Easter eggs today? How many Easter eggs? I don't know. You don't know? Too many to count? Yeah. Wow. And what, do you have a favourite Easter egg that you've opened already? Uh, no. No, just all of them. Who, who else received an Easter egg this morning? You received an Easter egg. Wow. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Yeah, come forward, come forward. Oh, gosh, don't you look smart? We've got bow ties. Shh. We just want to make, make the children feel welcome. We've got a young man here with a bow tie. It's amazing, amazing. Right, right, children. I want to introduce something called the Pascal Blessing. Do you know what the Pascal Blessing is? Should we ask this lot here? Who, hands up if you know what the Pascal Blessing is. See, not even they know. Oh, Viv knows, Viv knows. The Pascal Blessing is a blessing traditionally said on Easter Sunday. And I say, or the, the priest says, he is risen. And the crowd in the congregation says, he is risen indeed. So after three, we're going to say that, yeah? Will you, will you shout out, he is risen? And everyone else will say, he is risen indeed. Will you do that for me? So after three, I'll just let you finish your croissant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so after three. <laughs> Never work with animals and something. Okay, so after three, say, he is risen. And all of us here will say, he is risen indeed. Okay, three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Shall I choose someone else? So actually, stop it. Will you shout out? He is risen. After three. One, two, three. He is risen. He is risen yeah. Give them a round of applause. All right. Why don't we all stand? We're going to sing a song. Uh, there's some actions to it. Hanan here, she's going to show us the actions for everyone. But she doesn't want to do this on her own. Or do you want to? No, no, no. no, no. So... Uh, SP, do you want to teach us the song and then we can do actions or do you just want to go, go for it? Yeah, should we do a chorus? Yeah? Cool. Chorus goes like this. Canyons wide, oceans deep Can't contain all your love for me No matter how high, far I reach There's no end to your love for me one, two, three. 
sing, I've scaled the mountains. I've scaled all the highest of mountains. I've stood at the edge of their peace. But I still couldn't see uh, the edge of your love for me. I've walked on the wildest of waters. I've sunk to the depths of the sea. But I still couldn't fathom the depths of your love for me. Canyons wide, oceans deep, can't contain all your love for me. No matter how high, far I reach, there's no end to your love for me. I've wrestled belief, I've wrestled belief in the valley. I barely hung on through the night But just when I thought it was dark The sun began to rise Canyons wide, oceans deep Can't contain all your love for me No matter how high, far I could I run that you wouldn't run after me? How could I fall when you already took the fall for me? Beyond the stars to the very breath I breathe, there's no end to your love for me. Where could I run that you wouldn't run after me? How could I fall when you already took the fall for me? Beyond the star to the very breath I breathe, there's no end to your sink. Canyons wide, canyons wide, oceans deep, can't contain all your love for me, no matter how high. in canyons, canyons wide, ocean no matter how high, far I reach, there's no end to your love for me. Let's give the kids team a hand, give the kids a hand. Amen, amen. We're just gonna jump right into worship. Let's worship the risen King. Yes, Jesus, we love you. We just wanna give you all the praise that you deserve this morning. We're so grateful, we're so grateful for you.
had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. eternity the king of life was on the moon for in a dark
of his majesty when every knee will bow in awe and wonder as we behold the splendor of our King hallelujah Jesus is alive hallelujah see him lifted high raise a shout Sing hallelujah one more time. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Oh, hallelujah. See him lifted high. Raise a shout. Give him praise. Let's magnify his name. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. So I could live in the freedom you die for. And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. goes on and on 
Yeah, God, worthy is your name. There is no name higher, greater, more powerful than the name of Jesus. And we're here for you this morning because you conquered death, you conquered shame, you conquered our sin. You have poured out your life for us. And we lift you high, Jesus. We lift you up. So Lord, we say be high and lifted up this morning. Open our eyes afresh to the goodness of you rising from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Well, welcome church, happy Easter. Can I have all the kids come to the front? Kids, kids, it's time for kids church. And church, can we give them a little cheer, a little celebration, it's kids. Yeah, come on! Kids, come to the front, come to the front. Maybe if you're new parents. And we just wanna say a special blessing over kids as you go to church. So may you have a great and wonderful time learning about Jesus. And we just bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to let kids venture down um, as they just make their way with parents. And then, hey, if you have, if you're a parent of a baby, um, we have a room in the back. Maybe, Chris, can you give a wave Um, back there where it says green room? If you have a baby this morning and you just need a little bit of space, there's a couch in that room and you can hang out there. And where are our youth this morning? Can we get a little whoop, whoop? Whoop, whoop. Yeah, okay, we've got three youth, great. Um, I see you. Uh, and so youth is gonna join us this morning in service, uh, and we're really excited to have you. Yeah, come on. And um, even there's a little interview happening later with a youth, so get excited. Um, yes, I don't know, did I say my name? My name is Kelsey. 
I am the West Side site pastor, and I lead here at this site alongside a bunch of other great leaders, um, a part of Vineyard 61, and we are a multi-site church, so we're really, really grateful to have you, Vineyard 61, um, and say happy Easter this morning, celebrate together, and um, we just want to say a special welcome to those who are new this morning. Can we give a little cheer to those who are new, a little clap? <laughs> woo, 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 woo! Yeah, we're so grateful that you have joined us for Easter this morning. If you are new here, newer, newer. And then um, just a little invitation. If you fill out this Connect card, we would love to get connected with you and talk more about following Jesus. And so if you're new, at some point through this service, there's one on every seat and hopefully a pin, if not a pin, on your chair. Then um, ask your neighbor because I think there's a pin around. Um, and thank you for laughing at that. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, you can fill this out. And then um, after service, Viv and Chris, um, some of our pastors, will be by the front door. And we have a little surprise goodie bag for you. Yeah. Ooh, thanks. Um, let, let intrigue rise. Um, yes, so happy Easter, church. With that, I'm going to invite Ruth and Viv up for a little bit of an interview. Can we give them a cheer? <laughs> Ruthie, Ruthie, where's Ruth? Oh, she's at the back. She's not the youth, in case you wondered. Um, but we, uh, Ruth heads up all of our comms and our creative media here at Vineyard 61, and we thought we'd just hear a little interview this morning. And um, so, Ruth, how did you first meet Jesus? Big question. Big question. I've got two major encounters with the Lord. The first one was when I was about four years old. My parents were Baptist pastors in South Africa. And I remember I was in my bedroom one evening and Jesus stood in my doorway of my bedroom. I can still see him standing there. And so I invited him to come and live in my heart, as one does when you're four. Um, <laughs> but soon after that, um, the enemy really ripped my family apart. And we had gone through things that no little girl should ever go through. And so as I grew up, I was so filled with um, pain and rejection. It was like an anchor, and it was sinking me. So this Jesus that I had seen in the doorway when I was four grew further and further away and became a distant memory as I tried to fill my rejection with the things of the world, with partying and all kinds of forms of that and, <laughs> and boys. Um, and then my second encounter, thank goodness, was when I was 18 years old, I stumbled into a Christian gap year. God tricked me. I don't know how I ended up there. Because um, we didn't, <laughs> my parents were no longer in the ministry and we no longer went to church and I no longer was interested in a relationship with Jesus. Because if I thought of Jesus, I thought of hurt and I thought of pain. Um, and so I was at this gap year and we went through um, this inner healing course, would highly recommend. Um, and I was kind of looking at all my trauma and I had this, this vision and it was like, I'm seeing you now. It's how real it was. And I saw this, Jesus took me back to me as a little girl where all these terrible things were happening to me. And I saw him standing next to me and he was weeping over me. And I realized that he had never left me, he had never forsaken me, but him in his goodness had felt my pain and he was crying over me. Um, and that was, I guess, my second salvation mm. <laughs> or my recommitment and the rest is mm. history. It, <laughs> that's amazing, thanks. I was weeping when uh, we went through this on Thursday and I was just weeping as, as she was telling the, the extended version. Um, but this Easter, mm. what does the cross mean to you personally? I love Easter. I think it's the most beautiful um, moment in our Christian faith. I wish the world would make as big a deal of Easter as they do of Christmas every year. Mm. Um, and if I think of the cross in light of what I just shared, I see Jesus hanging on that cross, but not just my sin that is nailed to that cross. And I'm not minimizing sin because sin does lead to death. But what I also see is my pain, my rejection, my unworthiness, mm. my heartache. And I see that nailed to the cross with him. Mm. And then I think of the ultimate sacrifice. I've just been struck this year specifically around that, that Jesus died for me on that cross without knowing if I would choose him back. Mm. And what kind of love is that? 
even though I might have not laid my life down for him again, even though I might not have turned towards him, that's how much he loved me, that he did it anyway. And that's the kind of love that I would hope for the rest of my life to discover more of and to live in. And today is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. What does the, come, come on. on. <laughs> what does the resurrection mean to you, Ruth? I love the resurrection. It's why we're standing here today is because Christ is risen. The grave is empty. And um, in 1 Corinthians, Paul right, writes, O oh death, where's your victory? O oh death, where's your sting? And this became a reality to me two years ago when my dad passed away. And he had suffered an eight-year-long journey of cancer, and it was hard on our family. And it, um, but in this time, he had drawn near to the Lord in a way that had ministered to our family in the end. And on the day that he had passed away, I felt the Lord say, it's time. So I went into his bedroom, me, my sister, and my aunt, and he was lying there, and it was a wind still day. And outside of his bedroom, all of a sudden, the trees, you could see movement in the trees. And in that moment, we could feel the angels mm. entering his bedroom. And in this moment of what should be deep sorrow, and it was sore, there was this presence that filled the room that I'd never experienced before. It was the most holy moment. And it's when, it's when you're sitting in that tension mm. of there's resurrection and there is death. Mm. Um, and it was the most glorious homecoming as my dad went to be with Jesus. And what struck me in that moment was, death, where is your sting? Mm. And there was no sting in the death. Of course, there's pain. Mm. But we did not mourn like people without hope. Um, and so that moment has gripped my heart forever. It's changed the way I look at the resurrection and what that means for us. Um, and life with God, here's the thing with the life with Jesus. Is he never actually promised us an easy life. He actually said trials and tribulations will come. Not if or they might come. He said they will come, right? <laughs> but what he did promise is to always be with us, to lead us through, to love us through, to walk alongside us to nail whatever we're feeling on that cross. And then he rose again, so we get to live in this resurrection life. Whoa, come and on. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I think, I think, oh, go on. I just wondered if we could, if Ruth, you could pray for us. Mm -hmm. If you could pray, anyone that's grieving or going through mm -hmm. stuff. Or maybe you want to return to Jesus. I'd just love to get Ruth to, to mm. pray for us, if that's all right. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, God, you see our pain. You see our suffering. You, you came in human form, Jesus, so that you could be relatable to us in everything that we feel. You're not a distant God. You're not a God that sits on the throne and looks down at us and judges us. God, you love us so deeply that you sent your one and only son to die gruesome death but oh Jesus on the third day you rose again and there was hope again and we were restored again so I pray father anyone who's feeling any time of grief Lord oh death where is your sting I pray father that would become such a reality to people I pray God if anyone is distant from you this morning Jesus I see God just standing with his arms wide open ready to receive you so won't you come to Jesus again won't you turn to him again there's no pain that he can't um, fulfill. There's no suffering that he can't cover and there's no wrongdoing that he can't forgive. So I just pray, Father, Holy Spirit, won't you rest on this place? Mm -hmm. Jesus, won't you become a sweet reality to us, irregardless of where we find ourselves this morning? In Jesus' name. And what a celebration it is to know that that grave is empty and that you truly are alive and we are alive in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My name's Janice. I come here to Westside. And, okay, the two most important things about today, I think you all mostly know by now, are by his wounds we are healed. And he has conquered death. I know this because... I have had hearing problems from birth and many other things that have held me back. But, and my husband passed away, who I love very much, who was a Christian, 11 years ago. 
But I know that Jesus is the best thing of all. I know that because mm. there's many, many good people, many, many lovely things in this world. But until God is behind that love, until we have the selfless love, the selfless love that Jesus had, mm. then we can catch a glimpse of Jesus and I will never let him go. Never. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. So good to hear these stories of how Jesus has changed people's lives. Thank you very Thank you, Janice. Um, hard shift. Um, we just want to uh, tell you a few ways that you can get connected into the life of Vineyard 61. Um, the best way to go is to have a look on our website, vineyard61.org. Um, and then you can have a look at all the different events, the different life groups, the different prayer groups, the different ways that we gather together as a community. And so head on to vineyard61.org to find out all the different ways. It's just a great way if you want to get connected and you want to find community in London. Um, next Sunday, we have another All Together service at our Balham site. So head over to Balham. Um, at 10.30, we'll be meeting and we'll be gathering. And then we're going to have a newcomer's lunch straight after at our house in Balham. Anybody that's new to the church who wants to find out a little bit more is so welcome. So again, head over to the website. All the details are on there. You can sign up there. Um, every Sunday when we gather, we want to take a time to give God our worship in the form of our offering. Jesus is like the most generous person ever to live. He's given us his life. And so our response to him is simply to give back to him. There's absolutely no pressure to give, but there is um, a QR code on the back of your chairs and you can go and give online. And so we're going to be um, have a, a short pause. And in the meantime... Why don't you say happy Easter to your fellow neighbour? And then afterwards, I'm going to invite up David. Okay, you are in for a treat. Does anyone know where David is? I'm hoping that he's here somewhere. Um, apparently he's very on brand with our Vineyard 61 colours today. I don't actually know where he is. Um, in the meantime, why don't all the youth come up as well? Because I think they are going to pray for David. Is he actually downstairs? <laughs> Yay! Can I get my Bible? Get your Bible. <laughs> um, um, yeah, youth, why don't you... Who's coming up? Who have we got? Who have we got, David? Just need a bit. Should I just pass it over to you? Will you pray for David? Lord, we just thank you for David. We thank you that he's come here today to praise and honour you. We just thank you that you are in this room. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, before Robert goes back to his seat, <laughs> he's got a job to do. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. My name is David, um, youth pastor here. And I've got Robert Gator, one of our um, youth 
in this place, youth. Like um, Lucy would say, youth. <laughs> Part of our youth in this place. And Robert is such a great guy. And um, I've just got a couple of questions for him very quickly. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> so, so, Robert, um, tell us something about yourself. Um, something maybe we don't know. I don't think many people know you here. So, how many people know Robert here? See, so the hands are not too many. Good. So, so, tell us something about yourself, Robert. Yeah. Um, I'm 14 years old. You'll be 15 when? Next week. In a week's time, yeah. Next week, Sunday. <laughs> One week to 15. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? What, what, what activities are you involved in? In my free time, I'm an air cadet. And air cadet. And I also help out at my local scout group. Lovely. Lovely. Good, good. Robert, tell us about DTI. You went to DTI last year. How was the experience? What, what did you come out with from DTI? I felt that when I came back, I knew God a lot better mm. because I could just really feel his presence in that room. Mm. Mm. And since then, all I've been listening to is worship music. I can't get mm. enough of it. <laughs> Robert is amazing. I've, I've spoken to him a couple of times and I can just see his love for God. He's, he's young, he's a young person, still trying to find his way through life, but he's found something and, you know, he's found that the real thing, Jesus, and he's, he's just amazing. Tell us how important your Christian faith is to you now. How is your faith? Yeah, how important is it to you? It's essential mm. and without it, I don't know who I'd really be. Mm. Mm. And it's where I go to when I'm troubled or upset or worried. Mm. Mm. Praise God. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Before Robert goes, let's, let's celebrate him, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, some weeks back, a 16-year-old featured for the first time in the FA Cup. How many people know that? How many people follow football? Oh, sorry for the non-football fans. <laughs> Plays for Liverpool. I can't remember the name. Yongo or something like that. 16-year-old. And he was heavy at Wembley. And, you know, the crowd, the cheering and everything. And I was so happy to see Klopp, you know, feature that 16-year-old that in a very important scene at the FA Cup. And that's just what we're about. Letting the young people know they're important and that they, they have a place here. And God can work with them even though they're young. If a young person can play at the FA Cup, then a young person can do great things for Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Glory. Come on. Celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so wow. Okay. How do we do this? <laughs> now, how many people slept well last night? You had your full sleep. I didn't have my full sleep. They took one hour away from my sleep. So, so, so I mean, I was 6 a.m. and I was on the bed and my wife was telling me it's time. I'm like, it's 6 a.m. She said it's 7 a.m. I said it's 6 a.m. because I had my wristwatch on. I usually sleep with my wristwatch. I said it's 6 a.m. She said it's 7 a.m. I said, oh, it's 6 a.m. on my wristwatch. She said, no, we've gone one hour. I'm like, oh no, one hour of my sleep. I wanted to sleep some more. So I had a big struggle getting up from the bed this morning. Uh, but it's all good. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, I honestly was under a lot of, um, quite a lot of pressure when thinking about this preach. And uh, not because I haven't preached before, but because it's the first time I'd be preaching um, in the UK. Um, and so I felt the pressure. I felt like, oh, this is a different culture, Lord. <laughs> and I'm the kind of person who likes to play, you know, soft. I don't want to hit people. I don't want to, I don't want to shake the tables, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, Lord, how do I do this? I didn't have a problem with the preach, really. Well, I had a problem with the context, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, oh, Lord, 
and, and I shouldn't feel that way, honestly, because I've preached several times on the streets. Of UK, I've talked to people about Jesus, young people, old people, elderly people, um, adults, you know, not old people, adults. Um, <laughs> because I haven't preached, haven't preached an old person yet, yeah. But I've preached all kinds of people, and I'm like, why am I feeling this way? But anyway, I'm better now. Uh, <laughs> I'm here now, and in the next 20 minutes, they're about, I'll be done. <laughs> Let me back to my seat. But yeah, there's been a lot of encouragement from people and prayers, and I'm just excited. Um, so one way to help me, how many people want to help me this morning? Just want to help me. Thank you very much. I love people here. They love me so much. One way you can help me is when I say glory. Just give a response. Glory. glory. If I say amen, just shout amen. amen. Yeah, that's my African style. Just bear with me. So I think if I do it the African way, <laughs> we'll be fine. So if I give a call, just give a response. You know what I mean? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's it. John 3, 16. Yeah. Okay. So today we're looking at the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he means for us. And um, okay. what he means for us today. Um, There are two very important claims that Christianity makes that are mind-blowing. No other religion on the earth makes those claims. Now, I do not believe that Christianity is just a religion. It is a religion, yeah, because we've got things, characteristics and features of a religion, all right? After all, we're here, worshiping someone we're not seeing. <laughs> That's what religions do, right? But I, think, I believe that Christianity is more than a religion. And there's two claims that Christianity makes that no other religion makes. First, we claim that God lives inside us. The God of heaven and earth who made the whole world, almighty God, the holy God, righteous God, all-powerful God lives inside us. How on earth is that possible? It has to be a miracle. Amen. Amen. That's what we claim. Amen. Thank you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's what keeps me going. Glory to God. That turns me on. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. So we claim, we claim something that's unbelievable. God. I thought God was far away. I thought God was in heaven. I thought God was, you know, distant and separate from us. And we say God lives in me. We say God lives in me by his spirit. How is that possible? Well, because you are a spirit. And you've got a soul. And you live in a body. So you're a triune being. And so God can indwell your spirit. That's what we claim in Christianity. It's, it's one of the biggest claims in the world. And if it is true, the world should pay attention to it. Because we're saying God has chosen a house. And what that means is that the Christian is a moving temple. This place, this house here, Westside Church, is dedicated for worship and for prayer. But in reality, God doesn't live here. The reason why this place is important is because people in whom God lives come here to praise God and worship Him and spend time together and listen to His Word. And so you are the temple. I am the temple. Anytime a person receives Jesus into their heart, God comes to live inside them. It is the most amazing thing on the earth. Number two claim that Christianity makes is that the God who is so far and distant and holy and righteous and we are so sinful and messed up and wretched and in despair that that God has come to us and loved us. Other religions are trying to reach out to God, but in Christianity, God has tried to reach out to man. It's different. That's, there is an internal recognition system in every man that knows that God is real. The worst atheist knows that God is real. Yeah. People just grow up to harden up their hearts and probably because of pain and trauma and all kinds of things that have happened to them. And they just come up with ideas and say, oh, there can't be God. Why would there be God? And why would there be all sorts of violence? Well, that doesn't change the fact that God is real. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Doesn't change the fact. Doesn't change the fact that God is real. 
So what God did in Christ, in Christianity, was that he came into the mess. He came into the trauma. He came into the midst of the violence. He came into the midst of the struggle. And he felt what we feel. He became a man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So God came into the mess. God didn't sit back and say, oh, wretched human beings, they're trying to reach me. That's what every religion is trying to do. We're trying to come up with different ideas about God. And God says, don't worry, I'm coming. You're going to see me now. And that's what Jesus is. God as a man. Come to feel what we feel. Come to bear pain. They beat him. They murdered him. Because even Pilate, the judge at that time said, I find no fault in him. But he said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. But it was because he had to pay the price for our sins. So he was crucified, he was murdered. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so God so loved the world. God came to the world. God loved the world. He reached out. He didn't wait for us to reach out to him. He reached out to us. While we were yet seen as, I don't have that on the slide, so I'll just quote it. While we were yet seen as Christ died for us, God reached out to us. He loved us. He gave himself. Whenever you see only begotten son, it's another way of saying God became a man, basically. You know what I mean? So God so loved the world that he became a man, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When God came, he didn't come to give us rules and regulations. Thank God for rules and regulations. They're important. We need them, right? But that's not what he came to do, really. That's not the main thing he came to do. He came to give us life. <laughs> my children today are my sons because I gave them life. I'm not their creator, yes? Yes, but I gave them life. They've got my DNA in them. They've got my nature in them. And you look at one of my boys, he looks like my carbon copy. The two of them. <laughs> I, I brought them forth. I put life into them. God used me to put life into them. That's what Jesus came to do. For God so loved the world, I whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is the very life of God. What makes God, God? His nature, his DNA, his life, his person, his being, his glory. His love, who he is. That this is the greatest craving of humankind, mankind. This is the greatest craving. We are craving for something, but trying to fill that void with everything, every other thing apart from God. People try to use, I love sports. I, I follow Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest fans in the house. <laughs> Random. Chelsea fans. <laughs> West Ham fans. <laughs> Chelsea, Peter. I support Nottingham Forest. <laughs> I love football. I play football. There's Westside FC. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, we've got goalkeeper in the house. Yeah. Thank you for coming, Seb. Yeah, thanks for coming. So, yeah. I love football. I love fun. I love sports. But people are trying to use all these other things that are ephemeral, temporal, to fill an eternal void. There's something, there's a longing in every human. There's, there's something in us that's craving for the Father's love. Have you seen your child? I had to carry my boy there. He was making trouble, but I knew one way to just solve this problem is pick this boy up and let him know I love him. That's what every human being is craving for, God's love. We're looking for it. We're trying to fill it with all kinds of things. And because people have been bad to us, then we say, oh, God doesn't exist. God is not love. God is this. But Father is saying, I came. I came as a man to give you my life. Amen. 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 I was preaching to, I was, we, we went for healing. We had healing on the street um, some week, a few weeks back. And I met this sweet couple. They were looking at the, the banner. And I just felt drawn towards them. 
and they felt drawn towards me too. And I walked up to them and said, yeah, we're doing healing on the street here. Free healing. Jesus has given us healing freely and he wants us to give other people freely. It's free. You know, we just started talking and we were supposed to pray for healing, but we then moved on into salvation, eternal life. And I started telling them the best gift in the world is eternal life. Every other gift is going to fade away. Every other gift is going to run out. Every other gift is going to end. But there's one gift that never ends. It's called eternal life. And God wants you to have it. The guy said, you know, they looked at me, they looked at me. And I just loved them. Sweet couple. They looked at me, the guy said, well, well, yeah. The lady was almost accepting to receive eternal life. But then the guy said, well, I don't believe in God the way you talk. I don't believe in God, you know. I believe in a higher self. I believe in the universe. And I loved him. I had compassion on him. I said, yeah, it's fine. You can believe whatever you want. You have a right to. But I'll tell you what. That thing you're calling higher self, universe, I present him to you today. His name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the real deal. That's what you're looking for. God has placed an internal recognition system in every man. It's called the conscience. It's called consciousness. We know, we, learn, we yearn, we crave for that which is higher than us, the supernatural. And that is God. That's why people go into the occult. That's why people go into witchcraft. That's why people go into all kinds of things. They're looking for something more than them. They're trying to fill a void that only God can fill. Only God. Only His love. Only His grace. Only His presence can fill. That's what they're looking for. And they're running around and people are looking for, confused. Confused. The mental health problem has gotten worse. People are moving far from God and the further you move from your source, from eternal life, from, from that which is going to give you life, the further you move into, the closer you get to destruction. That's what's happening to people. And I look at them and I say, this is the solution. It's eternal life. It's free. It's going to be forever. It's not going to run out. It's being paid for. It's free. If I gave you my phone today and I said, I paid for this phone. It's free. It's for you. It's a gift. Do you have to pay for it again? No. Just take it. But I can't force it on you. I can't. God can't force it on a life on anybody. But it's free. It's the life of God. The pulsating life of God in the human body. You become a carrier of God. You, have a, you walk with a spring in your steps. And a smile on your face. You have God on your inside. That which the earth is looking for. The whole world is looking for. Dwells in your spirit. When you become a child of God. It's the biggest thing on the earth and in heaven it's the biggest deal i won't trade it for anything i won't amen amen amen, amen. 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 glory to god glory. Whew. i haven't got times so i need to move i need to <laughs> i'll just read this one look at look at this Look at this. Let, let, let's look at this together. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> and this is the testimony that God has given us what? Life. Come on, everybody say it again. And this life is in who? In he who has the Son has life. Who has the Son here today? He who has the Son. I've got Jesus. I've got life. It's a life. There are different types of life. There's human life. It depends on your blood. There's animal life. There's plant life. There's eternal life. <laughs> it's the God kind of life. Brings you into the family of God. Brings you on the level of God. I'm not saying you become, a, you become God, but it brings you into the level of God. It brings you into the Kedar of God. You can operate at the level of God. You can, think, you can talk like Jesus when he was on the earth. He said, the Father is in me. The words that I speak are not my own. The Father in me. He was confident. When I go on the streets, I go like that. I go with a sense of the Father is in me. What Jesus could say of himself, I can say of myself. I've got the same life Jesus had. Same life. He who has the Son has life. He who doesn't have the Son doesn't have life. These things I have written to you who believe, who believes here. Can you say glory? Glory. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. 
This is I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you know you have eternal life? Do you carry yourself like you've got eternal life? Do you think like you've got eternal life? There's a mindset that comes with eternal life. There's a way of thinking. It's a way of love. You look at situations and you laugh. You may weep for a while, but then you get up again with joy. You've got joy on your inside. You've got the nature of God on your inside. You've got the Holy Spirit on your inside. You're not alone in any battle. No matter what comes against you, you're not alone. It, this, is, this is what Christianity is about. This is the summary. John 3, 16. God gave the world eternal life. Simple. He didn't give the world a religion. He didn't give the world some set of rules and regulations. Of course, that came in a way, but that's not the main thing. For us, the life. Because what God wanted was he wanted to see himself in us. <laughs> God wanted to he wanted us to feel what he feels he, us, he, wanted, he came down to our level so we could come up to his level took away our sins behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world took away the sins then gave us his life and if I want if I want I can't expect a dog to behave like a human. It's got another kind of life. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. So what God did was he took our sins away and gave us his kind of life so we can behave like him. So I'm not trying to be, I am. I'm not trying to earn God's favor. I've got God's favor. I'm not trying to do so many things so God can think, oh, this is a good lad. Come on, he's made me good in Jesus. He's made me his son. He's made me a son. Hallelujah. 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 But as many as received him, to them, he gave what? The right. My children have got the right to call themselves my children because they've got my life. I gave birth to them. God, as many, it's simple, as many, this is so easy, so simple. It's such a shame that people are still going to perish without having this. It's free. Free. As man has received them, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. The same life that God has now begins to flow in your spirit. You can think like God. You can act like God. You can love like God. You can overcome sin like God. You're not struggling anymore in your own power. You begin to depend on the life on your inside. The new nature on your inside. God doesn't want you to try on your own. He wants to do it through you. Did somebody get that? I'll say it again. God doesn't want you to try on your own. Try with just your intellect. No, he wants you to do it. He wants to do it through you. We need to move. Praise God. Amen. I'll just read this one very quickly. For as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself. So when we say the father has life, that same life is the life in the son. And he who has the son has what? Life. That same life, eternal life. It's the God kind of life, the new nature. Amen. 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 But how was this possible? How did God do this? I don't have this on the slides, so I'll just read. If you've got your Bibles, you can turn there quickly. How did God achieve this? How, that's where we come to Easter. That's where we come to the death and the resurrection of Jesus. How did God achieve this? How did God, did God just say, Abracadabra. Eternal life, go <laughs> to them. No, we didn't do that. All right? John 12, um, very quickly, 24. I, I missed that on the slide, so I'll just read from here. But if you go to your Bibles, you can turn there. I'll read from 23 very quickly. How did God get eternal life into us? How did God get eternal life available for people? Because eternal life wasn't available in the Old Testament. They, they were managed species. The Bible says that the, the sins were covered, not taken away. The blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away their sins. So they were still in sin. The, the, the sins were not away. But in the New Testament, God has paid for sins. And how did he do it? See what he says here in John 12. Jesus said from verse 23. Oh, sorry. Looking at the screen. <laughs> John 12 from verse 23. Jesus replied, now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. Pay attention to 24. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat, that's a seed of wheat, a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. So this was God's big dream, God's big idea. I want to have many sons and daughters. 
I want to have people on the earth, a new race, a new creation. People who carry my life, people who can represent me, people who know me, people who have felt my love, received my love. I can transmit my love to a dying world. I want to have billions of them across the earth. Then he comes and plants his son in the earth. Jesus comes, they murder him, he dies. But when the seed dies, he doesn't really die. What happens is that he breaks the outer shell, right? And what comes out of it? Life. So the death and the resurrection of Jesus, is, it wasn't just an historical event, it happened. But it wasn't just that. What happened in reality was that life came out of that. He made eternal life available through that. So that when people believe in him, they will not perish. People are perishing now, and they will perish in the afterworld, the end of the age, because they refuse this thing. Very simple. They will not perish, but have eternal life. God gave that life to us. Amen. 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 Ah. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop in a very short time now. But did you get something today? Did you get something today? So that's what the gospel is. The death and the resurrection of Jesus. Powerful. Powerful. He died, came in. If Jesus died and didn't rise up from the dead, we would have still remained in our sins. Because what Jesus did in his death was he came into our mess. <laughs> and, and in his resurrection, <laughs> in his resurrection, he took us out of the mess. That's what happened. Came into the mess, stayed there for three days, conquered sin, conquered Satan, conquered demons, conquered the forces of darkness that are arrayed against you, and then he came out victorious. Came out victorious. Conquered. Came out victorious for you and me. Amen. Amen. That is that. I'm going to have to stop now. <laughs> what should we do with this? What should we do with this now? Now that we've got this resurrection life, use it. Act like it's real. Let it lose. Turn it loose. Get on the streets. Get into your offices. Get into the parks. Turn it, turn our life loose. Turn it loose. Somebody say, turn it loose. Turn it loose. I told some young people, some young lads, I was preaching. You know, <laughs> I go out with Pastor Steve. We go out from time to time for outreach. And I'm, I'm out there on the road in the cold. Sometimes, I remember one time it was really freezing. What are we looking for in the cold? I want to give people eternal life. The message of eternal life, the gospel. That Jesus died, rose again to give you eternal life. It's free. Come, receive it. And I told some young lads, I think, do you think I'll be standing here? I'm standing here like a jobless man. Like, I've got no job. If this stuff wasn't real, I wouldn't be here. I'd be in my house. <laughs> because you speak to 10 people and eight, seven people say, no, we don't want to talk to you. And they go their way, they reject what you have to say. They don't even listen. And you think I'll keep having rejections upon rejections and keep standing half the hair in the cold if it wasn't real? I'll waste my time. If Jesus didn't rise from me, let's go home then. <laughs> let's all go home. This is, this is just a social club then. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What differentiates Christians... The church from others. It's not because we, we were superior to them. No, that's not it. We've received eternal life. If we haven't received eternal life, then we are wasting our time. Let's just go home and sing and just have fun. If this stuff isn't real. If it is real, then let's get down to business. Amen. 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 Life is fading, guys. Life is fading. Just look at everything around you and you can see the life is fading. I told them, look at the old people. Can you see the old people? They're fading. They're all fading. No, I don't mean you. That's, that's what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. I meant I was pointing. <laughs> people are fading away. Praise God. I didn't mean you, sir. <laughs> people are fading. It's real. The only thing that will last forever is eternal life. When you fade away, you have a hope that one day your body will be resurrected. 
Like Jesus' body was resurrected and that you will carry the glory of God in your, in your immortal body, just like Jesus has. You have a hope. You know, like every other person. Amen. Amen. Proofs that did Jesus rise from the dead? Yes, he did. The tomb was empty. It's an historical fact. They said they stole his body. Well, if the, if the government stole his body, when the disciples claimed that Jesus rose from the dead, they would have brought out his body. Isn't that so? And say, well, we stole his body. But why would they steal his body when they put soldiers there to guard the tomb? He, he did rise from the dead. He did rise. Two, he ate and drank with his disciples. Ate meat. Thank you very much, Avi. <laughs> he ate and drank with his disciples. Transformed lives. Transformed lives is another proof that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Somebody say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Christians, friends, you and I are proof that Jesus is alive. I spoke to a young lad, very, very, I, 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 was talk, I was walking down from office from here and going home and I looked back and saw the young lad and I felt compassion. I felt my heart drawn towards him. I usually listen to that attention, pay attention to that. When I feel the Lord is drawing my heart towards someone. So I, I walked up to him. He, was, he could have said, no, I don't want to listen to you. I walked up to him and said, do you have a relationship with God? Smiled. <laughs> he, he looked at me like, and he also smiled. <laughs> like, who's this, guy? who's this guy? Then I told him about God and that. Then he said, how do we know that God is real? How do we know? There's no evidence. That's what he said. Well, I'm the evidence. <laughs> I'm the evidence that God is real. Have you seen Wi-Fi before? You've seen Wi-Fi with your two eyes. <laughs> but is Wi-Fi real? Is Wi-Fi real? Can you connect to Wi-Fi? When you have the password, you connect, right? The same thing with eternal life. It's real, amen. <laughs> we can't see it, but it's real. And the password is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. amen. The church is the proof of the resurrection of Jesus. We are the embodiment. We are the body of Christ. It means that Jesus is still alive today and he needs you and I to go out there and prove that he's alive. I walked in McDonald's for a while up in Darlington and one of my, I'm going to close with this now. One of my colleagues came up. She's elderly, she was elderly and then she couldn't speak well. Struggling with her speech. I felt compassion for her. She came in and I, she was in tears. She, then she struggled and put a piece of paper and wrote down, I can't speak, I don't know what happened. I woke up this morning and we, I was in customer service. So I was out there on the dining area if you used to McDonald's. So I knew she couldn't walk that way. She said, David, just do the other part. And she was higher than me in ranking. He said, do the other part. I felt compassion for her. I said, Lord, I've got what this woman needs. The power of God. I can pray for her. But I was in McDonald's everywhere. It was, you know, uh, how do I pray? <laughs> if I go outside, there's CCTV outside. Inside, there's CCTV inside. I'm not on my break, so how do I do this? So I said, I started praying in tongues. Holy Ghost, how am I going to do this? I can, this woman can speak. She can speak. I've got the power. I've got eternal life, the power of God. And then I, I, I went up to her. I said, can I pray for you? I wrote to her, can I pray? She said, yes. So I took her to somewhere beside the bin. People will know what we're doing. My eyes were open, like I was talking to her, but I was talking to God and talking to the dumbness, the speech problem. And I said, I command this in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your tongue be loosed. But I was talking to her. The people would think I was just talking, but I was releasing the tunnel, like the power of God. In two hours' time, she was speaking. <laughs> two hours' time. Because it's real. It is real. Amen. Are you blessed today? Are you blessed today? Yes. I, I'm going to stop here now. It's a good time to receive eternal life. There's so much to say. We could spend the whole day talking about this life. The God kind of life. A new order, a new race, a new species of people. Loved of God, burn of God, carrying the life of God. Loving other people like Jesus loves them. Changing their world. If you're here... Can you please stand on your feet if you don't mind? Thank you. I pray, I pray, this, I pray this prayer um, 20 years, or about a little above 20 years ago. 
and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, and I receive eternal life. Um, we're all going to pray together now. I know you might have prayed this prayer before and you know um, you have eternal life, but we're just still going to say it together. And if you're here and you haven't received Jesus, no shame. No shame, sister. No shame, brother. It's free. It's for you. It's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. Why choose death when you can choose life? So I want you to just say this prayer with me. Everybody, we're going to say it together. Say it with me. Heavenly Father. And say it from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you love me so much. You gave Jesus to pay the price for my sins so that I could be reconciled to you. And you gave us eternal life to all who would believe in Jesus. So therefore, today, I believe with all my heart that Jesus died for me and rose again from the dead. And he's alive forevermore. And I invite Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come in. And take charge of my life. Make me a new man. Make me a new woman. Make me a new person. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, rejoice and give him glory. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Now, if you said this prayer for the first time, are you, you want someone to pray for you. We would love to know you if you said this for the first time. We want to welcome you into the family of God. This is more than a religion. This is life. Real life. God life. We want you to just come out. If, you're not, if you feel good enough to do that, if you feel that's fine for you, just come out here and somebody will be here to pray for you while the worship is going on. And we're, we're just worshiping God and releasing while the worship is going on, you might want to pray. You might want to pray in tongues in your understanding. You might want to declare what you've heard. I've got eternal life. I've got eternal life. Just say it until you're conscious of it. Say it until boldness rise on your inside. Say it. Rejoice. His voice activated. Say something. Say something. Amen. God bless you. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine With a thousand hallelujahs We magnify your name Thousand hallelujahs, a thousand.
Turn me around, replace my feet on solid ground. Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on your solid ground. Thank you, God, that you're here. 
thank you that you're, you're real. It's amazing to me that we're just here and I'm asking the Holy Spirit, what, what's next? What, what can we do next, God? And as I, as I looked at the screen, I couldn't quite discover what was going on. But then as I, I look around and I see what the Father's doing, across the room and he's uh, uh, he's amazing the last few weeks last few months actually just a number of people who um, just are coming coming to us and coming to me who who uh, who want to commit suicide who where death is is their present and I, I just want to declare over it. Not that it's a quick fix, but I just want to declare, just as Ruth declared, death, where is your sting? And I just want to release again the life that David preached, the resurrection life that, that was planted in Jesus, that came out of the grave, that says now that we have life. And I, I just want to declare that over, over, over some of you, just the life of Jesus is within you. Just as I stood here, I remember the first time I walked into a, a vineyard church just down the road, and and uh, I remember the first first time they they had some ministry time just like this. The first time they said, "Would everyone who's under thirty just come forward and receive prayer?" And I was just under thirty, <laughs> and I sneaked to the front, and the pastor looked at me and he said, "Yeah." Are you here on per you know, are you under 13? I was like, yes, yes, yes. I'm 29 and three quarters. And as I stood here again, I want to pray for, for those that are under 30. I believe the life of God that that has tried to rob you of these last few years, the life that God wants to breathe on you, as someone who's now just over 30, I want to just declare and release life amongst those under 30. And if you are over 30, you, you can release life just as David says. You, we carry resurrection life. So come forward. There's not a lot of room here. Just come forward if you're under 30. Uh, just come forward. I believe that, that God wants to bless you. If you're just over 30, sneak in, sneak in. Just come forward, just come forward. Just come forward. Come face the cross, come face forward. Come walk forward, there's going to be a whole crowd. Just come walk forward if you're under 30. Come, come, you're going to have to come, come close. Let's all just face the cross if we're under 30. I'm going to stand in the middle, under 30. Just come face, come face. Come forward, come forward. God wants to breathe life amongst the under 30s. If you have uh, children downstairs, if you're a parent, would you go and, and help our team and just go and pick them up as well? You can bring them, bring them forward here as well, but uh, our kids team would really, really appreciate. Just come forward. Now close your eyes. Close your eyes. In this holy moment, some of you did pray that prayer for the first time, or you thought about praying that prayer that David prayed. There's resurrection life available for you and I. And the life that was robbed, the life that is trying to rob, rob you, Jesus today is breathing life upon you. If you're a parent, just push past these 30-year-olds and just say, I remember what that was like. And just push, just push past them. Don't worry about that. And for, if you're over 30, just stretch out your hand. You're a blessing to release to the younger generation. God hasn't counted you out. You're here to bless and release and to re release life into this younger generation. We bless them, Jesus. Fill them with your spirit. Yeah, parents, just walk past, just bless them. We say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. I speak life over you. John 10.10, 10, I have come that they have, may have life and life to the full. We speak life over you. Keep, keep receiving. Keep receiving. 
And if you this morning, whether you're in the chairs or here, you've had thoughts of suicide, deep, deep depression, deep anxiety, would you just receive that now? Would you receive resurrection life right now in Jesus' name? The life that only Jesus can give us, the hope that only He can give us. Receive, receive. Thank you, Father. Receive. So now, now take this and give it away. Go, go back and just find someone that wasn't here and just pray for them. We were meant to give away what God has given us. So if you're under 30, go and have a look around. Look, have a look at these amazing, beautiful people. These good looking people over 30. And just pray for them, bless them. Ask them what, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Just release your life over them. Let's go and pray. Let's go, just go and take away and go and find someone to pray for and just say, what would you like prayer for? And just go pray for them. Bless them. Bless them. Go bless them. If you haven't got someone with you, just put your hand up. These guys under 30 are now the ministry team. You can pray for mum. You can pray for mum. Go pray for mum. If you want prayer, just put your hand up. Here's the ministry team coming towards you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, we release your presence. Freely you've received. Freely you've received. Now freely give it away. Just pray together. Pray together. We're all part of the team here praying, ministering to each other. Find someone to pray with. Bless them in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit. We're gonna, we're gonna carry on worshiping, singing together. If you've, not, if you've not received prayer, just come forward, that might be easier. Otherwise, this is about as formal end as you're gonna get. Welcome to the chaos. Welcome to the kingdom of God, full of life, full of chaos. Receive from Him. We're gonna carry on worshiping together. If you wanna worship, come get some prayer if you wanna pray. Go outside and get your goodie bags. Otherwise, we'll see you next week at our Balaam site. The kingdom of God is here. It's advancing. Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead. Let's celebrate this week and this day. God bless you guys. Let's worship.
chose the cross for